What is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Ford Era. You got me Solomon here today and we are at Mask Motorsports and we got Jason here and we're hey. going to do a full tour of Mask and uh, if you guys saw the last video we're going to do a Godzilla and Snickers and uh, we just wanted to show everybody all the cool stuff here. Well welcome. What's, I appreciate uh, you, you having us. You ready for a tour? Or check oh. it out. Oh yeah. So what all do we got? Well this is our uh, tech center here. Uh, we have two locations. Uh, this is our tech center engineering and, and manufacturing and then uh, our other location is uh, distribution and warehousing um, so this is kind of the home where everything is invented and created and machined and assembled nice so all the r d and actual work work goes in over here and then at the other place it's more logistics yeah logistics uh, we have a couple finishing operations for our cylinder head machining um, and uh, uh, some of the finer details, assembly for cylinder heads and all the parts for engine builds and everything's at the other location. Uh, we ran out of space and we opened up that, that building in 2020, so. Awesome, and we, maybe we'll have a chance to go there? Absolutely. Sweet. Absolutely. This is uh, uh, where we do dyno testing and uh, cylinder head manufacturing and then engine assembly. Can I peek in and see what he's doing yeah. on there? I love seeing this type of stuff. What you working on, brother? Oh, uh, the little Billy Dally cavern. Nice. Give it all a tool pad. See if we could start making some chips before too long. Heck yeah. So you're just doing the programming? Yeah, just yeah. kind of going over everything. Kind of did all the all the pocket roughing and everything this morning. And starting to work on the finished tool pads. And just all the drills and tap holes. And that's, that's the bottom side. That, already gotten done we've run a few off and just kind of proved the program out uh, and now i'm doing, uh, doing the same thing with uh, the top side the top side heck yeah operation finish it out so. keep kicking butt keep i know i love so. all the magazine stuff on the walls to kind of show everything over the years that's cool yeah it's kind of a lot of nostalgia here since our start in 20 uh 2009 so this is our kind of all of our dynos and testing. Um, we start out down here with a Spintron and a lot of folks don't know what a Spintron is, but that's uh, a valve train test rig. And uh, it's torn down. We just finished a 2000 hour durability test. Wow. Um, what this does is we remove the crankshaft and put a straight mandrel in and run the camshaft and the valve train and what that does allows us to put cycles on an engine and test the durability of all the valve springs and rockers and valves and the wear and everything else so we uh we run the heck out of this machine so every setup that leaves the building goes through this yeah we validate basically components and batches and um different cam configurations and the dynamics of the interactions of the spring and the cam and RPM ability and new different packages and cam valve spring combinations. So very cool. That is awesome. I like when there's a lot of levels of QC. Oh yeah, yeah. It keeps us keeps us busy. But uh, we have uh, on site we have a Spintron, and three dynos, and a chassis dyno. Nine. Nine so three. So, so all of these are basically mimicked dyno cells. Yeah. So this one's kind of our development dyno. This is the one that's a little more accurate. Um, we do emissions and uh, we run O2 sensors on every, every tube. It's set up to do a little more R&D on fuel injection and um, emissions and a little more sensitive projects. Nice. Do you guys work with pretty much all the different um, <coughs> like EFI companies uh, yeah, for I mean, that? We, we work with a company called Haltech for uh, EFI, we have our own EFI controls, and uh, we work with Holly on a lot of stuff, so. Um, Heck yeah, it's a little bit of everybody. Yeah. Another dyno cell here, That's one. this one's kinda going together. This is gonna be a little bit more of a leak and squeak test. And then we have our production dyno here. Hello. Hello. This one looks like it's ready to go. Nice. Is that a Ford Blue Chevy? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. It's a LS engine um, painted Ford Blue. I love it. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure what this is even going in, but... 
looks awesome. But every single engine we assemble and manufacture runs through a dyno test before it ships. We validate every single engine. Nice. So it's gonna leave here proven and at least with a base tune on it. Okay, and I guess that's what you're responsible for. Yep. Making sure that you get all the power. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a chassis dyno. This is a little bit of our Frankenstein room. Ooh, I see a Godzilla. Nice. So I guess you put, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> yeah, right on. So we, uh, what we do here is we've been validating transmissions that work with different ECMs and um, different engine and transmission combinations. So um, specifically what we set up is, a, is just an old chassis that we can bolt an engine and transmission to and validate the engine controls and the transmission controls and make sure they work. It nice. shifts through all the gears and nothing pretty, but does the job. At the end of the day, it's what, the, you know, it's what it's all about because yeah. everybody wants to get this into their trucks. Yep. And a lot of the guys, I mean, now we have the 10R80 control pack, but prior to that, there was nothing you had to figure out like this OBR or the- Yeah, so we just validated uh, the OBR with a 4R100 trans nice. and we're working on a 6R140, and then we'll do the same thing for the GM 8-speed, 6-speed, and the 10-speed. Nice. So, so you'll have options for everything. Absolutely. That's awesome. So this is our kind of our manufacturing area. This is where we do all the CNC manufacturing, uh, all the five-axis, uh, all the five-axis work, the porting, the cylinder head, uh, roughing, and all the operations to make a cylinder head. So basically, one of our castings come in with no machine surfaces. It's from our foundry in Michigan. So they'll come in rough. This has already had the first operation done where it's qualified all the, the first level machining. And then from here it'll go to the different machines. Very cool. So we'll manufacture our own Beautiful. casting tooling and, um, and do our own foundry work. This is, uh, we'll get a little more sneak peek of that later. Oh man. But that's carved out of a straight billet piece. That is beautiful. So, and you saw Justin working on a program. This is the first stop for that valley cover for an LT engine. So it starts so, out like this, and that eventually chunk it'll and, turn into that. Yep. So, so cool. he's programming the next operations for that. This is a uh, coordinate measurement machine, also called a CMM. So this is kind of a neat tool. What this does is uh, you can kind of see some of the different parts and the sand cores, but what we're allowed to do here is just measure really accurately the parts and pieces as they come off a machine, uh, reverse engineer. But uh, check out that, That's a, that is a thick piece of stone. That's a big granite. Wow, 3,000 pounds. So it's flat. <laughs> She's flat. So this machine's kind of going in and qualifying the uh, the rough casting. That is so cool. <laughs> do you ever just come out here on your lunch break? And I do. I do. That never gets old. I was gonna say. I enjoy it. <laughs> Looks like you just got a fresh one out. Yep. So this machine takes a little bit more material off. Did the deck surface, did the uh, chamber, did the valve seat pockets. Nice. You load another one. And there's some stuff behind us we just can't show. So there's a lot of other cool stuff that's top secret. Now yeah, he's putting in uh, valve guides right now. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of hand work that goes into this uh, here's a couple another staging area these are uh, some of our LS heads these are through some more finishing but these already have the valve seats and chambers finished and oh. uh, the porting work is done how far out are you guys like if somebody wanted to order a set for their LS or Godzilla like a cylinder head? Uh, yeah. Right now we have everything in stock. No way. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, we've worked really hard. It's been it's been a hard couple of years trying to make sure we have everything in stock and get enough castings and supply chain's been a nightmare since 2020, but uh, we're in really good shape. We've worked really hard and... Um, What's the best place for someone to go to if they want to get a set? Really, it's just massmotorsports.com. Awesome. This is um, doing all the five axis porting right now. It's a little hard to see, but you guys can kind of tell what's going on. Some pretty cool stuff. And what's crazy to think is that back in the 60s and 70s, there was a guy doing that. All by hand. Yeah. yeah. And we still with, do, a, with a Dremel and he yeah. doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> no, and we still do a lot of hand work, but not on our production heads. Yeah. All of our porting is done by a machine. Do you have one of your series that is all by hand? Nope. We don't we don't even do it. Okay. Even our after our valves or our even after the valve job, we don't need to blend everything. It's done. Nice. It's done. These are top top of line equipment. That's a big boy. And this is so cool. I love coming to manufacture. Yeah, it's a pretty neat place. I love seeing chips get filled up and all the parts going through the process. It's also the smell brings me back because I've worked at you know different machine shops over the years and <clears throat> that smell, like it's just so notably machine shop. Absolutely. I get home and everybody says I smell like work. So, yeah. so, so here? this is kind of our uh, fabrication area and our block manufacturing. Machining. What's up, Tom? Wow. Turning uh, some stuff down? Yep, just trying to polish it up. Very cool. So, this so is just a small fab, fab welding area for various projects. Right here's our block machining area. So, a couple rod hones, line hones cylinder hones and then we do all of our block machining on a regular CNC machine. Nice. 100%. So everything's in a row so it kind of flows through the process. Last year we did 450 blocks through this cell. Wow. So this will come in and just perfectly get her done. Yep. That is so so cool. this is a block that just went through a re-sleeving process. So you can kind of see the sleeves just got finished pressed in. So we're just going to finish this off. Nice. One of our LT re-sleeve blocks. Really popular. What would you say is like <clears throat> of your most popular stuff? Uh, right now, our factory mast heads are, are really kicking it and our LT blocks and... What's uh, the differences for the people that might not know from a factory mast to a black label to a Moses? Oh, sure. So um, factory mast is a, is a new brand that we started in 2020. And that was something that we wanted to do to bring an entry level product to guys. So we wanted to go after kind of good, you know, really good product, a different name, and a really good price point that gets guys into the mask product line that is, is competitive, it's a good high quality, you know, it's, it's, it's a really nice cylinder head without the black label price. So really it's a factory mask is kind of intended for the guys that have a junkyard engine that want to do you know, a good set of cylinder heads and just don't really have the budget for a black label or a Moses head, but they want to be a mass product. So what's like, what's the, what does it cost? Um, so depending on how you get it and how it's outfitted and it starts at $995 for a factory mast head versus 16 or $1,700 for a black label head versus- Is that loaded? That's unloaded, that's bare, that's our okay. entry level. But uh, from a apples to apples comparison, it's about a $2,000 difference oh, wow. between a black label and a factory masthead. Nice, and power level, like what's, let's say you get a 5.3 from a junkyard for 600 bucks, you put on, let's say the basic factory mast, what's like that average? Um, so I would compare it against like a factory cylinder head that's been ported versus mm -hmm. a factory masthead. And you're gonna be up around 40 to 50 horsepower nice. over a factory ported LS head and you're gonna have about the same amount of money into it. Yeah. So the nice part about that is is you don't have to start out with a beat up casting. You don't have to put guides in it, seats in it, and port it. You just go right to a factory mast head that's brand new, high quality seats, high quality guides. It's got our aftermarket port in it. It's you know it's turnkey. Does it have a warranty? 
Absolutely. Well, that right there is <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Versus yeah, you and your buddies that, yeah, we've got down. that cylinder head hands looking down. good. And we stand behind our product, so it's uh, there's no question. Nice. But, and it's just a really cool product. We wanted to give back to, you know, our customers and have something that's like really good and competes against all the all the stuff out there. What's well, over on this side, except for <laughs> a bunch of t blocks? Yeah, so this is kind of our staging area. Um, finished engines will come through here. Um, we'll stage blocks that are missing parts or waiting on parts. You guys are familiar with that logo. Might be a little surprise here for you. I already know what's in these boxes, guys, but here is my Godzilla motor that we got from Ford Performance Parts. So this is actually a stock Godzilla build um, from Ford. So they were like, we have the crate motor, but we'd rather send you everything in pieces since Mass is gonna anyways take it all apart and make it into a Mass Motorsports Godzilla. So I think pretty much everything is here, right? Yeah, yeah, I think we're gonna, we looked at all the parts, you know, they're such a high quality and um, we're gonna put our flavor and our spin to it and, and build, a, build a badass piece, so. Dude, I can't even imagine how much fun Snickers is about to be. Oh man. <laughs> It's gonna be pretty rad. And fast. And fast. So we're trying to get Snickers, <clears throat> uh, not trying, Snickers will be at Ford Fest, which is, I think it's September 29th to October 3rd in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And uh, if you guys aren't going out to that event, you need to do whatever you can to go there. And if you want more info, just go to FordFest.com. Um, dude, what is up with all of these LSX blocks? <laughs> well, we're busy. <laughs> that is crazy. We're busy. We got lots of jobs and lots Six, of orders. So 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 34, 44. Oh, you haven't seen the candy shop yet. Oh man. Let's go see it. I mean, you know how many guys are watching this video right now? And they're <laughs> like, I can't even find one LSX block. <laughs> oh wow. Even more. So this is our final assembly. This is where all the engine builders put together all yeah. that hard work and machining and manufacturing and, and fine tuning. This is where all the magic happens. 45, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Dude, you guys got like 60 of them. <clears throat> That's pretty awesome. Now there's more at the other building. I bet. <laughs> Dude. So we're, we're pretty busy and uh, we're grateful. This is already grateful. my favorite room because the AC is the best. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the best. So some of these are in progress or just waiting for assembly or a part yeah, or so something like, like that. Yeah, so like I said, we're waiting on parts and we're trying to get as much, you know, supply chain has been been pretty difficult in 21 and 22. So we're getting them as far as we can, wait on parts and go on to the next one. So when the parts get here, we can, we can knock them out. Hell yeah. Are some of like those, are those like a more of a crate? motor yeah yours, that's actually or? one of our projects that we're doing for an industrial application nice an industrial application is getting a supercharged lsx i like that top secret yeah hey whoever it is it's school bus or whatever they're going to be fast yeah. i can tell you that absolutely <laughs> um so yeah this is that uh there's another godzilla that's blocked nice so this here's, one's about to get built yeah we got, I think we have three or four builds kind of going together right now for Godzilla's right now. So this is our billet intake. So I didn't realize, I mean, I posted actually on Ford Era, just the video that you guys did last week or two yeah. weeks ago. And I didn't realize these were solid, billet. solid billet. I thought it was like most people's where it's like, it's aluminum, but it's all fabricated. And then right. when I saw it, I was like, dude, that is crazy. So this started out as two complete, yeah, it was a square block, yay big. That was all hogged out. Dude. This is... So each one of these takes about 40 to 100 hours of machining. Wow. What are these retail for? Right now they're about $6,400. That is a great deal for 40 hours of machine work. It's a, it's a lot of work, but it's a, it's a premium part. And you know, the factory Godzilla intake and some of the intakes on the market just really didn't hit the RPM and power levels that we wanted to hit. And really we've made three of these and it's, it's being used to develop the next round of cast or plastic intakes. So we know the market's not gonna accept $6,400, but it's a pretty cool piece. So we might as well show it off and do some cool stuff with it. I mean, I could imagine if we put one of these on Snickers and we pop the hood, everybody's gonna be staring. Oh yeah. So we might she's, need to do that. She's pretty. That's so cool. 
But I think it's funny whenever I go somewhere and it's like you could see the differences in guys. You got the Matco guys, you got the Snap-on guys. <laughs> Luckily, I don't see any Cornwell. Actually, I spoke too fast right there. Oh, yeah. That's on a vintage Snap-on box, actually. I love it. Looks like here's a f almost finished Godzilla. Is this one about to be assembled or taking it apart? Just waiting on uh, pretty much push rods and that's it. Nice. Dude, that is cool. Yeah, so that one's done. That, as soon as we get push rods, it'll be hitting the dyno. Okay. You guys get hand assembled one. by an awesome American. So this is why you should buy their products. <laughs> so we got here, more stuff, dude. I think this is a supercharged airboat. Supercharged airboat. That sounds like a good time. Uh, all aluminum. Makes about a thousand horse. Gonna make about a thousand horse. That's yeah. it, huh? Only, I know. What's the supercharger on that? It's a four liter. <coughs> four, four liter, liter whiffle. Oof. A four liter whiffle. That's gonna be a monster right there. LSR. Never even heard of that. Yeah. It's an aftermarket LS aluminum block company out of uh, Indiana. Oh, that's very cool. Yep. Yeah. Nice. And Looks like so, we got even more. Yeah, another area. supercharged Whipple. Do you know if Whipple's actually coming out with their Godzilla stuff? Uh, rumor has it. Yeah? Rumor has it. We'll see. Are you guys going to do that or you're not sure? No, we've been working with um, Harrop pretty pretty much on all of the Godzilla superchargers. And, um, you know, it's a pretty nice piece. So They're out of Australia, right? Australia, yeah. Well, we know Australians know how to they absolutely. tires. Absolutely. We've got one of their uh, superchargers over here. Oh, really? Man, that thing looks great. Oh, yeah. There it is. So tell me a little bit about it. Well, so it's a 2650 Eaton rotor style, um, designed and manufactured by Harrop in Australia. And uh, they've been a really good partner of MAST. And, um, Made really good power on the dyno. Nice. What are they, uh, that compared to with one of your motors, what's, what kind of levels, or tell, I guess even talk to us just a little bit about the different Godzilla stuff you have. Sure, so we have three crate engines that are naturally aspirated. We have a 600 horse, a 625, and a 675. Um, and the six, 625 or the 675 are built for boost. So those go out with a forged, forged rod, forged piston, set up for guys that want to run boost or add boost at a later date. Really good package, makes good power NA and or with boost. And then our supercharged Godzilla, uh, we're rating it at 1,000 to 1,300 RPM, or sorry, 1,000 to 1,300 horsepower. Wow. Um, we ran it, it made 1,000. We're waiting on the next kit, and I think uh, Harrop's going to help us out to try and hit that 1,300 mark, so. That's going to be badass. Should be pretty cool. I'm excited for that. Heck yeah. And now I guess we're gonna head over to the other building? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and uh, we're gonna go grab Snickers, drive over there, and we will pick you back up when we get there. Welcome. Welcome, it's an uh, unmarked building in Nacogdoches. It's our warehouse and uh, cylinder head finishing. Dude, this place looks like, I mean, what is it, twice as big as the other one? Yeah, it's uh, two to three times larger. Wow, so I'm excited to see what's inside. You guys actually get to see it at the same time that I do. I didn't get the pre-tour this time, so a little bit more interesting. <laughs> so we'll, we'll start the tour with kind of our cylinder head finishing and uh, all the little details that goes into our cylinder heads. So what happens at our other building is the majority of the machining, CNC porting, finishing from our castings uh, gets completed at the other building. Uh, and then we transport them down here for the pressure testing, final deburring, uh, finishing valve job, decking, and all the little details uh, that go into our cylinder heads. So, so is that what all these really cool looking machines do? That's right. Could you give us like a 30, 60 second on each machine? Yeah, like what so they are? Uh, we actually do a couple different valve jobs here. So uh, what a valve job is, is uh, we take and cut an angle on the valve seat here and what that does is allows the valve to seal on the valve seat and the cylinder head and this cutter comes down to cut the angle into the valve seat to match the valve oh, that's so really cool. what that'll do is spin around and put the profile in the valve seat nice 
So that's a uh, manual operation. And then we come over here. This is a CNC version of that same machine. This is where all of our cylinder heads get finished, valve jobbed, and it's a uh, really nice machine and really high end. So it does a really good job. Gotta all computer control. That always clock in on time. That's on. right. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Um, so a lot of our work is in prototyping. So this machine over here allows us to take, uh, I think we spoke about it at the other shop when you have to hand blend or hand do a port. So what we'll have is a technician that'll go through and hand do a port and just find the desired airflow. And this machine can come in and digitize. Basically it goes in and computerizes that port and allows us to duplicate that port in our production facility. Wow. So this machine is a really good tool for that and allows us to quickly duplicate what was done by hand. And also it does two to four pieces or up to 20 pieces in small volumes. Nice. So it allows really cool. us to, to really do a short run, a short, you know, somebody has a trick set of heads and, and it'll go in here and get done pretty quick. What about the back row? Yeah, so sure. So this is just a uh, uh, one of our older CNC machines that just does some odd jobs here and there uh, as needed. And then um, back over here, this is where we do the cylinder head decking and finishing. So cylinder head will get placed here and then it gets the final machining process. So that cutter comes around and decks the head nice and clean. Gives us that proper so cool. mated surface. That is really nice. So you, that's right before the process. I love when products are actually made in America and like the companies are so proud about every piece of it. Yeah. That, you could just like tell that. I'm sure in the video people realize that, but when you're here, you can really see that. And now we're on lunch, so the guys aren't here, but like, all the guys are so prideful because it's like, I assemble this myself. Right. It's me. You right. Know? It starts from, you know, we design the cylinder heads in house 100% with our engineering team. And uh, we go as much as design our own tooling to do the pouring at the foundry. Uh, we make our own foundry tooling and send it to the foundry. And even last year, our foundry wasn't able to get workers to pour our castings, so we went up and poured our own castings. We no spent, way. Yeah, we spent uh, a month up at our foundry in Michigan uh, pouring our own castings last year. So our guys are experienced, and That's it really started cool. with our here and all of our guys from start to end. So nice. not a lot of companies can say that nowadays. I, I think a lot of companies can't say that because flights to Asia are really expensive. You can't get there. Yeah. Can't so. get there. We don't, we don't wait on a boat. No. So. <laughs> um, a lot of the airflow, some Godzilla heads. Oh, are they? Yeah. Nice. I didn't realize. I can't just tell by looking yet. Yeah. So this is some Godzilla heads that have already been ported. They're here getting finished up for a few engine builds. So what we'll do is this is all the CNC porting. So these are gonna get valve jobbed and mated to the valves and we change the valve job and the valve angle on the valves. They'll get cleaned up here on the blend. They'll get decked and assembled here. Awesome. So cart full of Godzilla heads. Someone's gonna be happy when they get them. Uh, this room's kind of, uh, in fact, here's a Godzilla on the flow bench. So we mentioned the port development is actually still done by hand. So. Um, what a technician will do is he'll go in and we'll, we'll go to that room. He'll grind out and add putty and change the shape of the port to try and improve the airflow into the, into the cylinder head. Yeah. So once that's done, it goes on this machine and basically pulls airflow through the cylinder head and tells us how good we did. So wow. it measures every, every 100 thou of lift through the through the valve motion hmm. and can tell us okay this had made this improvement or or not or this was worse or better so that's what this room is essentially for that is rad and go into kind of our engine parts area 
I love when I see fun shelves. <laughs> yeah, lots of badass American horsepower in here. Oh yeah, they're just waiting. The eagles are stuck in the boxes. That's right. Waiting to fly. That's right. So um, all of our parts for our engine builds and customers uh, really kind of start here. Um, they received in, inventoried, cataloged, and are staged for builds coming up. All the fasteners. Very cool. You guys like swag. So there's some merch. You always like the merch. Got uh, rows of pistons. There are so many people right now that are like, I can't get my hands on a set of wise <laughs> <laughs> All of our valve inventory. And then uh, this is where the cylinder has actually get assembled. So we keep all the valve, valve springs and components right here. So. Titanium valve spring retainers, that's for a triple spring. All titanium parts here. That's a really expensive shelf. And I understood that this morning the guys busted out the heads that I unboxed yesterday. Yeah. Right there. Did they bang them out? Yeah. Yeah. They're doing a banged up job. I mean, I think they still have to finish it, but they did the, yeah. what is it, CNC porting. Yeah, so these are done. So this is this is ready for assembly. So we have three benches here. Um, and what we'll do is we'll set up the job, we'll pull all the parts, we'll measure all the components, we'll set up the cylinder heads, we'll set up all the parts. Make sure they're clean, make sure they're washed, make sure they're greased. Assemble them here, and uh, this is kind of the final step of our cylinder head production. Awesome. So these are uh, just waiting on springs and valves. We're slamming this thing together. Absolutely. So I'll take you back to kind of the uh, fabrication <coughs> area, and then we can go out to the big warehouse. Here's kind of where uh, a lot of our, some of the cylinder heads we bring in are repairs for customers and or cores that we got that need to be disassembled. So this is kind of the first step where they come in and get disassembled, inspected, qualified, dirty parts, or the parts get scrapped. So from here, um, kind of cylinder heads and staging, and then we have our welding room. We try to keep this a little isolated because it's a dirtier operation. So a lot of our welding and cutting and fabrication happen in this room, um, and it doesn't contaminate the rest of the parts. This is the dirtiest operation. So this is our porting room. So this is where our technicians will go and spend hours and upon hours of the day developing a new port, looking for optimized airflow, trying to figure out the next horsepower gain. So here's the hand grinders. So they'll go in and grind the ports. And then come out looking just covered in dust. Absolutely. <laughs> so power stroke diesel heads. Anybody want some power stroke diesel heads? We have them. Really? Our partners at uh, Kill Devil Diesel. So that's a pressure test. So 100% of our heads actually run through this process. 100%. All right. 100%. Well, that's a good number. So what exactly do you guys do then? So cylinder head will get bolted to this fixture okay. right here and we block off all mm -hmm. the passages and we put air into here and then we dunk it into the water. So from here you can see the bubbles coming up. Once we pressurize the cylinder head with air and run it through the water we look for leaks. What that does is tell us if the casting is good or bad. So 100%? Absolutely 100%. Wow. Well yeah, if there's so any bubble. If it, if it leaves here, the only way that it's bent is if UPS really dropped it hard. Man, if UPS drops it, <laughs> I would, I'd be a little upset with these. <laughs> but yeah, there's no, um, you know, with casting aluminum, sometimes there's porosity, sometimes there's defects that you can't see. This is kind of that final step of, okay, we're making sure that it's watertight, it's not going to leak oil into your port, it's not going to leak water into your oil, for it vice versa, oil in your water, and it's just a solid cylinder head. How often are they not good? Um, depends on the foundry, but pretty much 100% of the time they're good. Awesome. So this is the third pressure test mm. that they get through the process. Got it. So by this time, the only thing we're checking is to make sure there's no nicks or anything else in that process. Nice. I love how cleanly, clean <laughs> everything is. Like, 
the floors are mopped. I'm obviously look right there for I mean, all of it, you know. Yeah. To me, that's such a big deal. Like you could see the floors; it just makes it look so clean. Yeah, this is our finishing operation, so it's really important. So this is where our warehouse is. This is where a lot of our bulk, big materials come in. So as our cylinder heads are finished up at the other building, we stage them all here. So when they come from the other building, they have rough edges and very sharp corners. They're ready all for finishing. So this entire shelf here is all cylinder heads that have just been completed at the other building. These are cylinder heads that are finished, inventory, and ready to ship. Oh, nice. So these just require assembly. Some LS7305s. Yeah. So these are, anybody could call today, they'll yeah. be boxed up ship and shipped this day. week. Oh, wow. Same day. Wow. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. And that ebbs and flows, but right now we have quite a bit of inventory. Absolutely. So this is kind of overstock. We keep uh, intake manifolds and water pumps and crankshafts and so all the shipping and packaging happens, boxes and gets pretty hectic around here. Very cool. Um, These are all big power waiting to leave. Yep, those are all engines buttoned up, ready to ship. That's a... That is so cool. Whoever is about to get this thing is gonna be so happy when it arrives. It's going in a Jeep. In a Jeep? Yep, That's thousand cool. horsepower. Thousand horsepower? <laughs> yeah. Wow. What can't you put in that lesson? That's right. So a lot of our cylinder heads, um, we our factory mass product line, we buy a lot of cores and uh, we refurbish the cores and sell them back. So we make sure that they're good. We CNC port them. So we have quite wow. a bit of inventory. Yeah, you could say that. Racks and stacks. Each pallet is what, 36 pieces? No, way more. Dude, this is nuts. We have about 7,000 cylinder heads in stock. 7,000 cylinder heads in stock. Dang, that is crazy. You got valve springs? Five, three valve springs, bud? <laughs> wow. Yeah, so these, are, these aren't <laughs> sorted yet, but what we'll do is these are takeoff valve springs, and you see that one's rusted, so that one will go in the trash. But we'll, we'll pressure test them and wash them and inspect them and reuse them if they're good. Great. Cylinder blocks, and uh, look, these are all cylinder blocks here, so all of our LT blocks. This is pretty cool to actually see. Pallets of the cylinder blocks. Pallets of them. Where do you, like, are these all pullouts or are they some of them are, are new? A lot of them are pullouts even... and salvage stuff and, yeah, these are all cores for our re-sleeving process. So hmm. we'll take these up to the other building, we'll cut out the sleeves and put new sleeves in them and uh, make them rated for a thousand horsepower. So these are the reasons why we can't find stuff at junkyards either. Well, we're hunting for them too, just like everybody else. <laughs> if someone has a couple of pallets, they should call you if they're trying to sell That's them. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Not only are you a seller, you're a buyer. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, six Godzillas that we converted for a customer. So these are going in some badass trucks. Oh, baby. Literally six of them ready to go. Do you prefer the clutch fan versus going electric? Depends on the application, but a clutch fan works works pretty good. So it's hard to argue with uh, a good clutch fan, especially what, in a truck. What power levels are these motors? These were all rated at 600 horse. Okay, so the so your entry level version. Absolutely. But these are rated for just good durable towing horsepower, good torque. So what what do the what do these get? They get the stock bottom end. It gets stock, your head job. Yep and cam cam valve spring valve train kit our our computer our controls um our tuning and um um just some other tweaks fuel rails and uh we validate them on the dyno make sure they run good and they're tuned and they're ready to go nice well i think we're probably concluded of the tour yeah 
Well, hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you don't already, subscribe to the channel. If you can, please smash that like button. It really helps me out keep doing these videos. And uh, have any questions, comments, drop them down below. And let me know what you think about all of this stuff. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, major shout out to this guy right here. Thank you for everything. Oh, you're welcome. And, uh, We're having fun. I'm excited for everything that's about to happen with this stuff. I think the Godzilla market's going to explode and you guys are the leaders of that right now, which is super we're, cool. We're kicking ass and we really appreciate everybody. So, hell yeah. We'll see you guys in the next video and trust me, you're going to want to see it.